Hello, in this video, we will cover multiple 1D array programs and searching and sorting. This is part 2 of our 1D array programs and I am assuming you have already gone through part 1 as our basics remain the same. So let's get started with multiple array programs. These programs basically have two or more 1D arrays which you need to manage. There are two types of multi-array programs. One is where all arrays are of same size and the second one has arrays of different size. When arrays are of same size, you can use one index i to work on all rows across the arrays. When arrays are differently sized, in that case, you might need to declare more than one index and you also have to take care to increment it too. So let's start with the first category where multiple arrays are of the same size. The first program is to take an array of numbers and to store the square root and cube root of those numbers in two other arrays. Considering array ARR as our input array, we need to declare two other arrays of type double as our output will be with decimal values. Now we take our traversal loop. Inside the loop, we just use math.sqrt function to find the square root and math.cbrt to find the cube root and store it in the new arrays. Note we are able to use the same index for these two arrays. Once calculation is done, we print the answer. Now it's not one answer, we have a complete array to print. So you can either print the answers in this loop itself or you can keep this loop separate for logic and write another traversal loop for printing the answers. I have used square root and cube root as an example but you can get any calculation like multiply each number by 10 or find square or cube of each number. You need to then just change the logic part as per the question and solve accordingly. This completes this program. Next program is to take an array of double values and split and store the whole number in one array and fractional part in another array. So here our array ARR has double values. We will declare two arrays, one long and one double to store the whole and fractional part. Now we take our traversal loop. Inside the loop, we just typecast our number to long to get the whole value and then subtract this whole number from our number to get the fractional part. Since here too we have an array of values to print, we place our print statement inside the traversal loop. This completes this program. Next program is where we have names and marks in three subjects for five students. We have to find average mark of each student and class average. Now here we first take four arrays as input. We need to find the average of each student. So we need another array to hold their averages. And then we need to find the sum of all these averages and find the class average from there. So we will declare two double variables for sum and class average. Now we will take our standard traversal loop. Inside it, we will add the three marks and divide by three to get the average of each student. We also need to find the sum of these averages. So we add a line for sum plus is equal to average. We can print each student average here only. And once we are out of loop, we can calculate the class average by dividing the sum with the number of students and we print it. This completes this program. Now we will do some programs where we have to do searching and sorting. Here I am using linear search, binary search and bubble sort but you can use any other algorithms as well. I am not covering their algorithm explanation as those I have already explained in these videos. Here I will explain the next level as how to use them in multiple array scenarios. The first program is where we take in the name and marks of the student and we have to print details of all students who have marks greater than 90. Here we will do a linear search. Here we have two input arrays. 
name and marks then we get in our standard traversal loop. We then just put in an if condition to check if marks are greater than 90. If yes, then we print the name at the corresponding index and the student marks at the same index. In search program, we are often asked to print a message if no record is found. In such a scenario, we can just use a flag variable to indicate if a match is found or not. Once outside the loop, we can check this flag and give an appropriate message as required. You can get multiple variations of this like print all records with even numbers or search for marks of a particular name or all names which start with a particular character. You just need to change the if condition to get the desired program. Next, we will do binary search where we have sorted array of name and marks and using binary search, we find marks of a given student name. Here again, we have two arrays for name and marks. We declare a variable to store the index where we will find the name. We initialize it to minus 1, not 0 as in arrays our index starts from 0. Then we take in the name from the user which we want to search. Now we will write the binary search code. We first store the length of the array we are searching in n. Then we set the range of the array to search which is the entire array initially. So low is set to 0 which is the index of the first element and high to the last index which is at index n minus 1. Now we will set up a loop till we have finished searching for all elements that is till low is less than high. Inside the loop we will find the mid value of this array which is at index low plus high divided by 2. Then we use compare to ignore case function to compare if the name matches the name at index mid. If it returns 0 means match is found. We return the index where name is found. If the value is negative, then that means we need to search only the first half of the array and we can ignore the right side of the array. So we set high to 1 less than mid. If the value returned is positive, then we ignore the array on the left of the mid and set low to 1 greater than mid. We continue this loop till name is found or high becomes greater than low means the entire array is searched. Once out of the loop, if the index is still minus 1, we print the element not found. Else we use the index to print the name and marks. This completes this program. You could also be asked to search based upon marks or any other numeric value. Then you can directly check greater than, less than and equal to and the remaining program remains the same. Next we are going to do bubble sort. We are using bubble sort algorithm but you can use any different algorithm as well. So the program is to take two arrays say name and marks and sort them on the basis of their marks. Here our input is two arrays for name and marks. We will take the size of the array in variable n for ease of writing. We will set up the first loop to run n-1 passes. Within each pass, we will write the next loop to compare adjacent elements. Then we use if to compare adjacent elements. If marks are greater, then we swap them. Here one important thing to remember is that we have to swap both name and marks. If we swap only one array, then name and marks will no longer be in sync. Once we are done with swapping, we can write a separate traversal loop to print the arrays. Here if we need to change the sorting order from ascending to descending, the only change you need to do is to change greater than sign to less than. This will give you an array sorted in descending order. Another variation is that you could be asked to sort based upon name. If it is a string, we need to use compare to ignore case function in the comparison 
and check if it is greater than 0. Other than this, the whole code remains the same. Now we will do the next category where we have multiple arrays of different sizes. The first program is to merge two arrays of equal size into another array such that it contain alternate elements from each array. Here we first take two arrays, let's say of size 3. Then we declare another array to hold the merged values which has double the size. Now the merged arrays will have index values beyond the size of first two arrays. So we use a separate variable to hold its index. Now we have to copy from both arrays to another. So we use our standard traversal loop. Within the loop, we copy the first array element to the merged array and simultaneously we increment the index. Next, we copy the element from the second array and increment the index. This will ensure we copy one element from each, giving us alternate elements. Once we are outside the loop, we can print the merged array. Next program is where we have to merge two arrays of different sizes into one array, one after the other. We first take two arrays as our input. The sizes can be as per the question. Then we declare another array to hold the merged values. Here the merged array has size which is the sum of the two input array sizes. Now the merged array will have index value beyond the first two arrays. So we use a separate variable to hold its index. We use our standard traversal loop to copy the first array into the new array. We do ensure that we increment the index k. Then we write another traversal loop for the second array. Here too we ensure while copying, we increment the index. Once we are out of the loop, we can write the third traversal loop to print the merged array. This is our program to merge two arrays of different sizes. Next program is to split an array into two arrays, one containing even numbers and other containing odd numbers. Here we have taken an array of six numbers but it can be any size. Now we do not know how many even or odd numbers are there so we declare two variables which will store the count of each of them. We then do a traversal of the array and first check how many even or odd numbers are there. Once we have the count, we declare two new arrays to store the even and odd numbers as per the count. We need now two new indexes for these arrays and we declare them too. Now we will write another traversal loop where we will do actually copying of even and odd numbers. We put the if condition to check for even and during copying we have to make sure that their indexes are incremented every time. Once we are done, we print both the arrays. Now you can get variations of this program like split positive and negative numbers, split two digit and three digit numbers. Only change you need to do is to change the if condition and the new code is ready. You can be asked to split into three arrays too and you can do that by just adding one more if condition. With this we come to the end of the video. If you have any questions, you can reach out to us at simplycoding.in or you can join us for our online classes as well. Thank you and all the best.